<laughs> we're out. I just walked the boat out of here. There's no reason to be a hero. Yeah, and it's completely it's tight for our size boat. It's completely dead out here right now, which is exactly what we wanted. And uh, in absolute full disclosure, uh, <laughs> I was just grabbing the GoPro to put it up to catch the undocking and Bill undocked before I could get out here. I'm on the phone with my sister right now. <laughs> so right. it's about right, yeah. So, but we are um, leaving after being in Barra for seven weeks. So kind of crazy, actually. Yeah. Have any thoughts on this mo monumental? I'm hoping, there's no, <laughs> I'm hoping there's no launcher coming for me. Such a beautiful, beautiful town and stunningly beautiful marina. And I will miss it a little bit. Yeah, onward and upward. Yeah, exactly. On to the next phase. It was good to watch. <laughs> Got a little distracted by that sparrow. <laughs> Goodbye, Bara. It was pretty fun here. Yeah, it was. I have great memories of this place from two years ago for Dell's circumnavigation parties, and this year was also fun. Yeah, so you're, yep, we, we brought the heat this year. Yep. Seven weeks, we haven't moved this boat really, it's crazy. I know, it is crazy. As I think you could imagine, it's, it's a little bit nerve wracking moving the boat when you haven't moved it in so long. Um, so it's been seven weeks, and we're just gonna be checking all the things, uh, pretty thoroughly um shit like gauges what? Like, we don't really have autopilot yet either yeah we have to commission that thing hopefully it's not too rolly out there yeah the autopilot requires both a dockside commissioning and a sea trial commissioning uh to calibrate itself we have the dockside commissioning done but we haven't done the sea trial one so uh just got to make sure that it works oh. the sparrows are back they're so cute out of here, weird, huh? It is weird. Feels good. Yeah. This uh, spot over here is the surf break around that corner where Bill has been surfing. We're still passing the marina on the left side here. Uh, it's a huge property. You never really know what to expect on passage. And our loose plan today is to break up the 130 mile journey to Puerto Vallarta into pieces. To move north at this time of year, you need a break in the regular wind pattern. Plus, as we move closer to BV, it becomes very important to have a calm sea state because of the current. A little sporty out here. Um, you can see, well, the camera's probably not picking it up. Decent sized rollers coming through. We had to turn the corner to go into Tanakatita. We can show you on a map. Uh, but we got the code zero up, which is very nicely stabilizing us. Cause these are probably like, I don't know, six foot, seven foot waves, rollers coming at us and be on the beam. Uh, but it feels good at the sail up. And we're also beating small world. Can't see them though. So we are almost to Tanakatita. It's right up there off our port side. Um, we're sailing into the bay though, so we could do a sea trial commissioning for our new autopilot. Um, it's hanging on really well. It's really silent, which is amazing. I didn't realize how worn our old drive was, but uh, I have to do a proper calibration. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna bring in the code zero in a little bit. And yeah, more. There, she's starting to go now, more. Oh yeah, so 
resort. Uh, planning to head up to another Anchorage tomorrow, um, Chamela, or go all the way to La Cruz. We haven't decided yet. Um, so today was just kind of like a really short little sea trial sit type sail. I guess it's been about three hours we've been out here. And then, yeah, tomorrow will be like the real deal. <laughs> That was a short but fun sail flying to Code Zero. Um, I think it's time to rehydrate before we head off to the beach with our friends. And that's why I'm proud to announce this week's video is sponsored by Bottle Bottle. This bottle is made of double wall stainless steel and is BPA free. It's able to keep ice cold for 24 hours and drinks hot for 12 hours. This is a dual use lid. You could either have a straw on the inside or you could use it just to pour normal. Only Bottle Bottle has that feature. There's also a convenient carrying handle and in this large 32 ounce size, you have enough hydration for all day long. Get your bottle today. It's available in 24 ounce size as well as 32 ounces and a variety of different colors. Good morning. It's about 7 a.m. Um, just making some coffee, and we are going to continue, continue our journey north towards uh, Puerto Vallarta or La Cruz today. The uh, sun's just about coming up, and yeah, I'm about to get us underway. Grace has been having trouble sleeping lately uh, because of the medication she's on. So I'm just gonna let her sleep a little bit and I'll pick up the anchor myself. Um, so I'm locking the wheel. All right, let's go. Well, I've got the main up motor sailing now, as you can see. It seemed like the sea state's a bit calmer than yesterday, which is nice. Uh, there's a bit of a southerly predicted but I think it hit earlier, it hit uh, overnight rather than this morning. But I think it'll at least knock the sea state down because it's very persistently northerly winds here. Um, but yeah, we'll take it. It's probably gonna be a motorboat ride, but uh, that's all good. Although right now we actually probably could sail. But we got some charge in the battery bank and yeah. Here we go, 80 miles. beach last night and we went a little sideways and I'm thinking maybe like the, the hydro shield dug in and snapped it but yeah so that's gonna be a fun one I think it still runs I was trying to plane off yesterday and I was like hey why is the nose so high because usually the hydro shield helps keep us down uh, so Dave's gonna take a look for it they're still at the beach there um, but I now have to try to figure out a way to replace that or source a new lower unit or repair it always interesting that's a new one um, the outboard is from 2005, so it's almost 20 years old now. Uh, so I guess metal fatigue, fun. But we're still out here, it's going well. Pretty light air, five knots. Sea state's pretty decent, all good. Look who's awake. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh yeah, I, uh, I slept pretty 
hard, but I really needed it because I've been really tired. You've been really struggling. I've been really struggling. I'm gonna blame it on the hormone medication, which I think it actually is this time. Uh, but conditions are beautiful and I'm having my coffee because I have my caffeine withdrawal headache as one does when they push it this long. It's already yeah. noon. You slept hard though, it's good. Yeah, it's great. And we're already how many miles? Yeah. <laughs> We've done quite a few miles already. I woke up at about 6.30. And then we were just talking about where we're going to stop tonight. Um, so today we're heading to a place called Ipala. Ipala? Uh, we were originally intending to go all the way into La Cruz or Puerto Vallarta, however, we have like a 2 a.m. arrival, uh, so we can make this place just after sunset, sleep for the night, and then continue on our way in the morning. Uh, early morning is also best to transit Cabo Corrientes, which is a known area where there's wind acceleration and also a lot of water moving, so uh, it makes sense to take the very light air first thing in the morning and uh, get ourselves around it. So that's our plan for today. We're just talking about the um, the waves are starting to turn into big rollers. Probably won't be able to see it on film, but different motion. shaking in the wind, but it's hanging out. Oh God. We have 10 miles to go. Well, this is fun. It's gotta be a uh, wind against current here, 25 knots. And we're still going like seven, so must be a lot of water moving. Uh, we have like nine miles left to go. Finding some leaks, which we haven't been able to find in a while. It rained the other day, and we found something we need to address. Uh, but now we're seeing we just buried the bow under a huge weight that we haven't seen in a long time. We got a couple drips in the forward cabin, so it's all good stuff to do pre-crossing, but uh, definitely annoying. Seas build and the wind remains strong at 30 knots on the nose. Bill and I discuss our options. We consider going further out to sea or continuing towards the closest bailout, another nine miles north. We could turn around 
but we'd have over 40 miles to go to the nearest anchorage, which would be a night arrival and another eight hours of travel. After some deliberation, Bill and I decide to continue northward towards the closest bailout anchorage. Conditions are gnarly, but the boat is performing well. We just need to deal with it for now. to help stabilize things. Uh, we had full main up, but it's blowing like 30 a pair at a time, so uh, I figured it makes sense. It's feeling us over. Autopilot's throwing off a lot of alarms, but it's steering like a champ. It's getting the over rudder, rudder angle alarms. But uh, 4.6 miles. Maybe the wind is coming down ever so slightly. You can see the graph is starting to go down. And our speed is slowed way going down. Conditions have moderated significantly, so that is nice. We're getting pretty close. Looking forward to dropping a hook, making a nice dinner. I think the thing I'm most disappointed about is the leaks that I found. Um, that's something that is maintenance and should be avoidable. Um, I'm very happy that we have new fuel tanks in and we are so careful for our fuel right now because that was some crazy chop and the motor, uh, you know, kept going like a champ. So, uh, that's important to keep your fuel clean. I got some leaks to deal with though between the rain a couple days ago and now like this crazy sea state. Uh, I think we found a lot. So, better now than when we're at sea. You can't really do anything about it at sea. Um, it's all wet. So, uh, yeah. Going to PV. Got my work cut out for me. This thing jumped fully off. Yeah, the speaker. Wow. God, it looks like we've never sailed before. I'm terrified <clears throat> to actually investigate how wet the V-Birth is right now. I know it's not good. I'm scared too. But, uh, we just dropped the hook and I um, don't really feel like filming right now, but I know I will regret it if I don't because this moment will pass and I will not feel later the way I feel right now, which is that my nerves are completely fried. Um, that and, was insane. Yeah, I didn't even do anything, but I I still feel completely shot. I've never seen, uh, I'm not sure if I've seen seas like that ever. Like the boat, well, they were so steep and the boat would just go up one and then plunge into a thing and then it would just smash. Like we had water come fully on a deck. Like water was draining, we were healed like this water was draining down the stern back, like like a river. Like we took on a ton of water came over the deck. And so right before right before we left um, Barra, we had discovered some leaks uh, on that one day that it rained, but <laughs> those leaks were nothing compared to these leaks. And so anyway, when we found those leaks, we started looking around for more and realized we need to tighten our chain plates on the port side, blah, blah, blah. But taking so much water over the deck in combination with having some of these issues was really bad. And so, I was just seeing water gushing over here, and the V-berth is is soaking wet. And the hatch is leaking. We didn't even know that hatch. Yeah, we didn't realize this, but the the forward hatch is actually leaking. So we need to replace the gasket on that. And we've been sailing a lot, but we just haven't had that volume of water dumped on the hatch for that 
length of time because it was probably what like four we basically, hours we basically submarine boat like the whole four deck went under yeah like what would you say it started at like 3 30 4 4 maybe 4 30 the bad weather started and it's 7 30 now so yeah I, was, I can't believe that was only three hours that felt like 30 hours <sighs> anyway um this lead too <laughs> we're in this little spot right now that's normally would not be considered a great anchorage um, I'll show you guys. Uh, you can see this boat over here. Well, maybe you can't because it's so dark, but this boat is rolling um, and we are definitely moving, but I have never been so happy to be anchored, ever. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna have a drink. <laughs> and uh, I don't even, yeah, this one, like, I don't even, feel like we did anything wrong like it really it really came up out of nowhere and this is one of those situations we haven't had this too too often but literally all four models agreed and did not show this wind strength so now Craig and Crystal are behind us in small world they ended up getting like 20 miles behind us um, trying to sail talking we were really pushing because we felt it starting to slowly build and we just don't trust weather forecasts anymore. Although again, this is on a whole nother level. But uh, yeah, just hoping that they they went further offshore. Uh, we radioed them and told them it was bad. So hopefully it'll be a little better for them out there. Uh, but yeah, I feel bad for anyone and everyone that's out there right now. That was brutal. I was definitely questioning why I do this for the last three hours. Let me go check in with them. Small mm. world, small world, Calico, 7-4. Mm. Are we a little close to them? That's, a, that's yeah. what I was saying. I think we're okay. Because we dragged a bit. We were a little closer. You're a little broken up there, Craig. Someone is relaying between small world, not small world and us. Yeah, I copy that. So uh, small world is uh, heading southwest um, at, uh, uh, I guess at a low at a low speed, just uh, trying to stay uh, keep the boat comfortable. Okay, copy that. Yeah, uh, we are in Apala, and we made it through safely. Um, we had other boats, there's three boats in the anchorage, and uh, one boat had tried to go around Corrientes and had to turn back because it just got worse. So maybe let Small World know not to try to go around tonight. <clears throat> okay, copy that. And uh, Small World, Calico Sky says they are in Apala, um, and uh, uh, with three other boats, uh, one, one boat had, had tried to go around Corrientes and turn back. Uh, because it was pretty bad. Um, and uh, Calico Skies, uh, uh, confirm, yeah, you guys are at anchor in Ipala, correct? Yep, we are in, we are anchored with uh, two other boats, so three in total, and space there is space for a fourth if they want to come here. And we are safely anchored and uh, no damage, just a lot of washing machine seas. <clears throat> okay, copy that. Um, small World, yeah, Calico Sky says, yeah, they are anchored with two other boats. Three that, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on you. It sounds like you see us, but um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on you. We haven't seen you yet. Okay. Thank you for that, Starfire. We see you on AIS as well. We love the South Bus. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, copy that. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that info. We found out later that a sailboat snapped their boom in the crazy seas today. It's a sobering reminder of the ocean's immense power. A little post, uh, we did like post 70 passage, miles today. Post passage <clears throat> celebration with chicken, meatballs, and orzo. Chicken, garlic, risotto, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs>